So hello and welcome to this lesson in our study of optimization too. So this happens to be the first lesson and in this video I'm going to introduce you to linear programming. Okay. So I'm going to kind of read off a final year student of mathematics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and I'll be taking you through this lesson. So please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't so that you wouldn't miss new videos okay so linear programming what is linear programming so a linear programming model seeks to maximize or minimize and you know maximize or minimize mean you are trying to what optimize because to optimize mean to maximize or minimize so an LP model seeks to maximize or minimize a linear function okay this is a very key word here a linear function subject to a linear set of constraints okay so for an LP model that's a linear programming model the objective function that we are trying to optimize is always linear okay so you can see that it says a linear objective function and a set of constraints are also linear so please take note of this okay so if these two conditions are satisfied then we have an LP model okay so that means an, in an LP model we can't have something like s1 squared this makes it nonlinear we can't have something like s1 x2 this makes it nonlinear all right so both the objective function and the constraint are all linear so we have an example here maximize 8x1 plus 2x2 subject to 4x1 plus you can see the objective function here is linear and the constraints are also linear and this is what we term as the um, non-negativity constraint Okay. So every linear model consists of the following components. We have a set of decision variables, okay. And for instance, when we take the example here, our decision variables are x1 and x2. So we call them decision variables because it is those things that we are looking for to make a decision. Do we get it? That's the solution we are after. Okay. Then we have an objective function. So here the objective function is the 8x1 plus 2x2. And we always have a set of constraints. Okay. And you can see that these are our constraints. So every LP model consists of these components. You can see that. So now let's talk about applications or importance of linear programming. The one thing I should note is that many real world problems lend themselves to linear programming modeling. And many real world problems can be approximated by linear models. And there are well known successful applications in, in the manufacturing industries, in marketing, in finance, in advertising, and agriculture. Okay, so linear programming models they really have a lot of importance and applications okay that's why they are widely studying operations research so when you are given a problem okay and you want to solve them most of the times the problem will be given to you in the form of a word problem and you would have to formulate the model out of it okay so at this point you are coming to spend some time on how to formulate an LP model so when you have a word problem how do you take the model out of it because if you are not able to get the right model then you can't get a solution to the problem so getting the model is very very important to King so let's pay attention here so I um, read this question. It says Galaxy manufactures two 
toy doll models okay so the models are space ray and zappa so let's take note of that and it says resources are limited to thousand pounds of special plastic and 40 hours of production time per week so you see we have we always have constraints limitations and we have some market marketing requirements okay so um the first one is that the total production cannot exceed 700 dozens okay or dozens and the second one is that the number of dozens of species cannot exceed number of dozens of zappers by more than 350 you can see that one here as well then we have technological inputs right we say that the speech race requires two pounds of plastic and three minutes of labor per dozen and zapper requires one pound of plastic and four minutes of labor per dozen so you can see that this thing looks weird right it looks funny but we will try to formulate the model from it okay so you see the current production plan calls for one producing as much as possible of the more profitable product space we as a profit for that one is eight dollars profit per dozen and we will use resources left over to produce zappers that's four profit per dozen while remaining within the marketing guidelines okay and there's a current production plan don't worry after we're going to digest them and form the model out of it so he says management is seeking a production schedule that will increase the company's profit so a linear programming model can provide an insight and an intelligent solution to this problem so how do we formulate it so now let's digest the problem here so you can see the problem said galaxy manufactures two toy doll models right so you can see we have zappa and space ray and these are the two things that we want to produce but I want the production to be in a way that the constraints given will be satisfied and will be able to get the maximum profit. That's what we want to do. Okay. So what we can do is that we can let X1 represent the number of what um space rate to produce per dozen, right? So you can say let X1 be equal to the number of um, space ray to produce per dozen then we can let x2 be equal to that of zappa right mm -hmm. and so that's what you can see here so when it comes to the formulation you see decision variables let x1 be equal to weekly production level of space ray and x2 is equal to weekly production level of what zappers okay so after getting that you see resources are limited to thousand pounds of what plastic and 40 hours of production time per week so when we come here it says total production cannot exceed 700 dozens right so what this means is that x1 plus x2 cannot exceed 700 so this is one constraint then it says the number of dozens of space rays cannot exceed number of dozens of zappers by more than 350. So you see that's of it's x1, right? Cannot exceed so sorry. So x1 cannot exceed. So that means x1 will be less than or equal to x2 plus 350 degree, 350, right? So when we we write to get s1 minus s2 will be less than or equal to 350 so this will be the first constraint and this will be the second one okay all right so we we have formulated two constraints here then when you come you see space rate requires three pounds of plastic 
and three minutes of labor okay so that means that for the space we when it comes to the plastic so we can write space we then zapper okay then plastic and labor so when it comes to space we it requires two pounds of what plastic and three minutes of labor per dozen right so the labor is three then when it comes to the zappers it requires one pound of plastic and four minutes of what labor right so we have something like this then we know from the question that um thousand pounds of what special plastic resources are limited to thousand pounds of special plastic so that means the total plastic that we can have is thousand and that of labor hours is 40 hours of production right so 40 but you can see that the three here and the four here are in minutes right so we will have to convert them and um, convert the 40 hours here to minutes and we do that by multiplying here by 60 and this will give us 2400 right so that means that the third constraint we can get is 2x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1000 and we can also have 3x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 2400 so we have our constraint so this is the third one this is the fourth one so remember you formulated the first one and this was the second one then it says we want to um, get a profit function okay so the profit function will be given by we can see z is equal to so you can see that when we sell um the speech we so per dozen the profit to make is eight dollars okay so to be eight x one and for that of the speech which is five so plus five x two so this will be the objective function so that means with our problem that we had we can write it this way maximize eight x one plus five x two so it is maximized because it is profit and we always try to maximize profit but if it was something like lost or cost we would have minimized it so you see maximize eight x one plus five x two right subject to these constraints and we always bring the non-negativity constraint which is x1 x2 greater than or equal to zero in this case so this is the formulation of the model which we have gone through it okay so if you didn't understand anything you can go over the video again and you can also ask questions in the comment section and i'll be glad to help you so let's take a second example okay so it says a company produces two products that are processed on two assembly lines assembly line one has 100 available hours and assembly line two has 42 available hours each product requires 10 hours of processing time on line one while on line two product one requires seven hours and product two requires three hours the profit for product one is six dollars per unit and the profit for product two is four dollars per unit we have to formulate an LP model for this problem. So you see, um, the company produces two products. So that means we will have two variables, okay? And we are producing them on two assembly lines. So these are the resources. And there will be limitations on them. So you can see that assembly line one has 100 available hours. So that's the limitation for assembly line one, and out of line two has 42 available hours. So this is also another limitation on the line two, right? So it says each product requires 10 hours of processing time on line one, 
that's what you can see here so on line one put that one which you will call x1 you use 10 hours it recounts 10 hours and on line 2 to a product 2 to on line 1 product 2 to recounts what 10 hours and the total or the available it has is 100 and when you go to line 2 it says while on line 2 product 1 recounts 7 hours and product 2 recounts 3 hours so that's what you can see so on line 2 product 1 recounts 3 hours product 2 Recall seven hours, put out two, three hours, and the total available hours you have is 42. So, our will just function will be 10x1 plus 10x2. Sorry, our constraints, okay, sorry. Our constraint will be 10x1 plus 10x2, less than or equal to 100. 7x1 plus 3x2, less than or equal to 42. So, now let's formulate our constraint. This is the profit for product one. It says dollars per unit, and that's what profit two is four dollars per unit. And so, the basic function will be six x one plus four x two. So let's see. So you see, we said let x one be number of units of product one, x two number of units of product two, right? So this will be our constraint, which we just explained, and this will be our objective function, which I just explained. So the problem then becomes maximize z equals six x one plus four x two subject to this constraint and we always include the non-negativity constraint okay so when we have an lp model we solve it to get the optimal solution that we are after okay so in our lessons we will be talking about two methods for doing that so we have what we call the graphical method which we can only use when we have two variables x1 and x2 x y or something like that so when our decision variables are two, and we have simplex method, okay. So in our next video, we'll talk about the graphical method, and in subsequent ones, we'll talk about the simplex method. So thank you very much for following. And if there is anything you didn't understand, please watch the video. And if you have any question, you can please ask in the comment section. So thank you very much. All the best, and see you in the next video.